Now let's look at this figure 21-34, and we're getting into sealing requirements using seals, and we're entering the enclosures, and where a seal must be provided in accordance with 501.15A1 and A3, as well as 501.15B as in boy 1. Now notice you have an explosion-proof enclosure here, 500.7a of the code, defined in Article 100, Part 3. And notice within 18 inches, if the equipment is not self-sealed, you have to place a seal. This seal shall be installed within 18 inches of explosion-proof equipment. And for Class 1, uh, Division 1, 501.15a1. For Class 1, Division 2, 501.15 biz and boy one. And uh, notice these seals uh, kind of minimize the uh, escape of uh, vapors through the seal. Now, uh, th these are explosion proof pieces of equipment. Now, notice at the very bottom uh, of the enclosure to the left, if a seal installed within 18 inches of each enclosure, only one seal is required. Now we would be looking at that actually to the right and notice from that uh, enclosure to that uh, switch, it's 36 inches so we can put one seal in the center uh, of, of the run and we're 18 inches from each uh, enclosure, that's okay. Now if we have a factory seal and the uh, switch going to the motor, as you see to the left, and it's factory and seal, then you don't need a seal. But if it's not factory seal, you do need a seal. And of course, your motor, no seal required on this side, is shown. Explosion, uh, explosion proof motor is a factory seal, self seal, in accordance with 501.15A11. And, of course, Exception 3 address, addresses the issue. So no seal required uh, on the side as shown in the illustration in accordance now with the Exception 3 to 501.15A11 and 501.15B1. And that's what this illustration, 21-34, uh, is illustrating. When do you need a seal? where conduits enter an enclosure that's not self-sealed in accordance with 501.15A1 through A3 uh, and also 501.15B1.